Hey there, and welcome to this week's edition of Clean Technica's News Broadcast. My name is Hanan, I'm your host, and today we again have a bunch of really interesting stories from the past week. But before we get to them, I just wanted to point out that this is the 10th edition of our news broadcast. So yes, we've been doing this for 10 weeks straight now. So I guess the next milestone is 50. In the meantime, let's get to this week's news. Warming oceans. Wow, it's warm outside. Must be climate change. Or, hey, you see there is snow in winter. See, climate change isn't real. Those are obviously ridiculous statements, but those are still things you can hear even from people like the United States president. Yeah. In any case, the, that's not how it works. You know, with climate change, when you, it, it means that there will be an average increase in temperature, but not every part will be affected the same way. It doesn't mean that there won't be any cold peaks. And not every part of the atmosphere is affected equally in each layer. However, as we find out today, this can also be said about the different layers of the ocean. According to a new study in the journal Nature Climate Change, even if we cut all fossil fuel emissions yesterday, some pretty big damage to the oceans has already been booked for the middle of the century. Now, because climate change largely depends on the proximity to the equator and the poles, you could say that the climate is shifting from one location to another, and this is something called climate velocity. Now, this study has calculated that by the middle of the century, climate velocity will increase from 5 kilometers per decade to 50 kilometers per decade. Now, keep in mind, that is if we stop all fossil fuel emissions. And so, at that time, by mid-century, uh, climate velocity on the surface will have slowed down, but not in the ocean. What is even more concerning is that the climate velocity rates will triple in the mesopelagic layer, where fish like tuna live. By now, math literate folks might have realized that if you multiply 6 times 3, you don't get 50. And that's where the next problem lies in, because the climate velocity is no longer the same at the different depths of the ocean. And in fact, life will try to stay within the same temperature uh, zone that they are used to. Basically, to try to stay in the same temperature range, life will move to new locations and even new depths, which is detrimental for other ecosystems. Uh, take the same example of tuna. They rely on plankton at the surface, and if they venture into lower depths, they will starve to death. Or there are also a lot of marine park areas designed to protect different species, and if they venture out of their usual habitats, well, they will face other dangers. Most at risk is the life that already lives down at the lower depths. The ocean might be a weird place, but they are used to some very stable temperature ranges that don't really change. And because of that, they are very, very fragile. It's why some of the oldest creatures in the world can be found there, because they live in conditions that don't require adaptation. Siberia so this is some pretty crazy news. Siberia, the place in Russia where people were sent to freeze as punishment, but now have been sunbathing instead. The area, which usually in the peak of summer in July would never get temperatures higher than 17 degrees, just reached up to 30 degrees Celsius in May. Let me just point out that the average temperature for Novy Uringoy, as you pr would pronounce it correctly, in May is supposed to be minus 2.7 degrees Celsius with a maximum of 1.6 degrees Celsius. Or at least that was the case between 1982 and 2012. You know how the world is trying to make sure that the global average temperature isn't going to rise above 1.5 degrees Celsius? Well, this part of the world has had an average temperature increase of 10 degrees in the first four months of this year. Regarding forest fires, Russian officials believe that this summer will be the hottest that this region has ever had. They're expecting an unusually destructive fire season. Last year, uh, forest fires burned 7 million acres of Siberian forests, and this year, 1.5 million acres have already burned. BYD Han. So when it comes to the BYD Han, we already knew approximate prices, as well as the approximate prices for Europe. However, now we know the definitive prices for China. Starting at just $32,325 is the plug-in hybrid with 80 kilometer battery range. For just a tad more at 33,730, you get 506 kilometers. For $36,540, you get 605 kilometers of range. And for 39,350, you get an all-wheel drive performance version with 550 kilometers of range. And we're actually continuing with a story related to BYD. China EV sales. 
because BYD's Shin Pro EV model was the best selling EV in China in April. Here's the graph. However, as you can see, the Tesla Model 3 is not that far behind, followed by GAC and, to my personal surprise, NIO. If you put it a bit more into perspective and look at the overall Q1 numbers, you get a very different picture. The Model 3 is leaving the competition in the dust. The BYD Shin Pro EV is still doing quite well, and NIO is a lot lower. Nonetheless, NIO does suddenly seem a lot more promising than it did before. The question is how well they will be able to scale. For more information on NIO, I actually recommend the Galley's videos over at Hyperchange, because he breaks down their financials like that. Peak oil. So we have already said that we have hit peak oil, but how do we know that for sure? Well, when we see the downward slope. And according to a report from analytical firm IHS Market, that is exactly what we are seeing. I'll jump into it with this quote. Due to the collapse in oil prices, IHS Market expects US producers are in the process of curtailing about 1.75 million barrels per day of existing production by early June due to operating cash losses. Lack of demand and storage capability and an unwillingness to sell resources at the very low prices available since the onset of the COVID crisis. Oil will bounce back somewhat when normal life resumes. However, and I quote, one third of the volumes, approximately 550,000 barrels per day, will stay off the market for the long term, or at least until WTI prices push above $50 per barrel justifying the capital spending needed to repair the impact that some of the wells will have incurred from being shuttered. The biggest damage done, however, is to investor interest. Oil won't grow again, and the question is how quickly it will decline considering how many EVs are being sold nowadays. Volkswagen Dieselgate Dieselgate, it has costed Volkswagen dearly. So far, it has already costed more than $37 billion, and that number is about to increase again. Some 60,000 owners in Germany got together uh, to file a lawsuit against Volkswagen. You see, they bought these vehicles that cheated on emissions tests, and Volkswagen was forced to recall these vehicles, remove the devices that cheated on the tests, and limit them so that they don't pollute more than they are legally allowed to. However, this has resulted in a significantly lower uh, mileage and made these vehicles very difficult to resell for the owners. So they sued uh, Volkswagen a while ago, and this lawsuit has slowly been working uh, upwards through the German court system. And now the Supreme, well, not Supreme Court, sorry, that's the United States, uh, the highest uh, court in Germany has ruled in favor of the owners and allowed the lower courts to decide how much compensation each, each owner will get. Now, I doubt it will actually increase the billion count uh, for Volkswagen, but it could easily go as high as $300 million uh, for them. And that's still quite problematic considering uh, Volkswagen's current position. First of all, there's the coronavirus and there are enormous issues with the Volkswagen ID3 software. Yeah, it's not great timing for the company. Atergo. Ola, India's largest ride-hailing company, expanded into the e-mobility sector in March 2019 with a separate new company called Ola Electric. This week, Ola Electric announced that it had acquired Dutch-based electric scooter company Etergo. You know, the company behind the app scooter? I visited them in Amsterdam last December. Both the way the company thinks and operates, as well as the product that they are creating, is why I call them the Tesla of scooters. A huge touchscreen on the steering wheel, crazy acceleration, very long range, and a ton of extra space for cargo. I mean, what does that sound like to you, right? Now, in any case, I called them up and their CEO gave me another interview to explain the situation. Basically, for any startup trying to create a hardware product that they need to bring to market, that's a really difficult thing to do, and it requires a lot of money. And Atergo, for some time already, needed a serious cash infusion. So selling the company, it was a necessity, unfortunately. And because of the coronavirus, they were also forced to sell the company at a substantial loss. Nonetheless, the company is now indirectly funded by some pretty deep pockets. I look forward to seeing their vision become a reality. And to read more about the app scooter and about the acquisition, make sure to check the video description down below because we have links to all our articles about these topics. Wave energy. If you have a platform floating out in the ocean, going up and down, collecting wave energy, well, might as well put some solar panels on top of them, right? And wind turbines? That is apparently what Synth Power seems to have done. I guess this image speaks for itself.
Without the wind turbines, the idea might have come over a bit more seriously, but all that aside, it's still a pretty good idea. Uh, the company calls it the first floating ocean hybrid platform. Yeah, that's quite a mouthful. Uh, until now, wave power hasn't really taken off and the market is actually full of bankruptcies, but who knows, maybe adding 20 kilowatt uh, of solar power and 6 kilowatt of wind power in addition to an undisclosed amount of wave power will be enough to make a difference. The fact that the amount of wave power generated is undisclosed is a bit weird, however. Amazon Most people know Amazon as a web shop to buy items that get shipped to you within just a few days. However, most of Amazon's revenue comes from their enormous cloud services made possible by the enormous data centers they have worldwide. Data centers are very power hungry and they can cause a lot of greenhouse emissions if the electricity they use isn't generated in a climate friendly way. Now, Amazon has been promising uh, to become completely renewable more and more and they're making progress on that. And this week, Amazon announced five new utility scale solar projects to power their data centers in China, Australia and the US. And when you put these five projects together, they generate more than half a gigawatt at 612 megawatt. When you put this all together, that basically equals 1.2 terawatt hours per year, which is basically enough to power 113,000 US homes. Now, when you add that to Amazon's existing renewable energy projects, you get a total of 7.8 terawatt hours. Just for reference, so you know, the United States in 2015 used 3,911 terawatt hours of energy. And Amazon now promises that by 2024, they, their data centers will be 80% renewable, and by 2030, that will be 100%. They also have an interesting goal for 2040, where they plan to be net zero on carbon in general, which is a lot more difficult considering that they fly airplanes and use a lot of cardboard. Rivian. The next story is actually a bit of an Amazon slash Rivian story, um, because even though Ford has canceled their uh, Lincoln vehicle that was going to be based on Rivian tech, so far Amazon's delivery vans that are going to be made by Rivian are still completely on schedule, or so Amazon said in a statement today. We also find, found out that Rivian is now resuming construction of their factory, uh, but only a third of the workforce will be uh, allowed on premises as they slowly try to figure out how they can bring everyone back to work in a safe manner. Solar in Algeria. So now that we are still somewhat familiar with how much electricity uh, Amazon in the US use, Algeria now plans four gigawatt hour of new solar capacity. That is almost twice what Amazon has. But, you know, I guess for a country with 44 million people, that shouldn't be completely unexpected. Although, when it comes to solar, that is 10 times more than that they already have. The project is called Tafok One. It was uh, initiated by their energy ministry. And basically, it's an enormous cash infusion. Uh, they're going to be investing between 3.2 to 3.6 billion dollars. And this is not just hot air, the government is completely serious about this. And here is a quote from their prime minister. In addition to satisfying national energy demand and preserving our fossil resources, the completion of this project would allow us to position ourselves on the international market via the export of electricity at a competitive price, as well as the export know-how. Right now, Algeria is a huge oil and gas exporter. In fact, 97% of Algeria's export is some form of fossil fuels. And now, not only do they increase their export and diversify their export, they also put themselves in a very safe position uh, if by mid-century oil and gas opportunities dry up. It's a smart move. Tesla prices. So on July 1st, full self-driving is going to cost $1,000 more than before. However, until then, at least in North America, all Tesla vehicles except the Model Y received a price cut. The Model 3 will be $2,000 cheaper than before, and the Model S and X will be $5,000 cheaper than before. This little chart here should clarify it for you. To add a bit of context here, it's possible that these price cuts are because of the lower demand during the pandemic. And even if that is not the case, a lot of analysts might think that, and because of that, the Tesla stock might go down. Now, whether these price cuts are also going to be available to other countries outside the US is still unknown. And that was it for this week's broadcast. We hope that you guys liked it, and if you did, please consider sharing it. I know the news broadcast is already 10 weeks old now, but we could still use your help if you'd uh, send it along to your friends that care about clean tech. We'd appreciate it. 
giving this video a thumbs up would also help us along. Now, everything that we cover in the news broadcast, we also try to write articles about, and links to those can be found in the video description down below, as well as with the little eye information icon up here. Other than that, I wish you guys a wonderful weekend. Till next time, see ya.